Spinach has vitamin A, B, and D. But spinach never appealed to me. Hi, everybody. Today I'm going to continue with a book on Abraham Lincoln. Who was Abraham Lincoln? And I'm on Chapter 3, A Member of Congress. In 1837, Lincoln moved to Springfield, the new state capital. And I have been to Springfield. It's a wonderful place to visit. Springfield was still a frontier town with log cabins. Pigs ran loose on the dirt roads, but it was the biggest place Lincoln had ever lived in. It even had a bookstore. He worked at a friend's law firm where he kept track of the paperwork. He wasn't very good at this. He had a habit of carrying important papers around inside his tall stovepipe hat, and sometimes he lost them. There's a picture of Lincoln with papers just falling out. He was a fun man. The state government was only in session for part of the year, and there wasn't enough business in Springfield for a lawyer to live on. So like most Western lawyers, Lincoln had to travel to towns all around the state. Twice a year, a judge visited all the towns that were too small to have their own courts. Lincoln joined the group of lawyers who followed the judge's route. Everyone traveled together. At night, they all crowded into small rough inns. Sometimes 20 men had to squeeze into one room. Lincoln often slept on the floor. After a few days, the group would move on. Sometimes the roads were so bad they had to walk. Because Lincoln had such long legs, his companions made him wade across streams first to find out how deep they were. And there's a picture of Lincoln going into the stream first so the others would know how deep the water was. <clears throat> Lincoln didn't mind the bad food or the rough life. He liked meeting people. He impressed them with his funny stories, his friendliness, his skill, and his honesty. If you cannot be an honest lawyer, he said, resolve to be honest without being a lawyer. Lincoln was a strong supporter of the Whig Party. Soon he became one of the most important party members in Illinois. Wherever he went, he worked hard campaigning for Whig candidates. He knew thousands of voters by name. Lincoln was comfortable with most people, but he was shy and awkward around young women. A couple of years after he moved to Springfield, he met Mary Todd at a party. Although he stepped all over her feet when they danced together, Mary liked Lincoln. She was a Southern belle who at 21 was very eager to get married. Pretty and lively, she put Lincoln at ease by doing most of the talking herself. Mary was more interested in politics than most women of the time. She often said that she wanted to marry a man who would be president. They were married on November 4th, 1842. Lincoln joked about how strange it was that anyone would marry him. Nothing new here, he wrote to a friend, except my marrying, which to me is a matter of profound wonder. On Mary's wedding ring, Lincoln engraved, Love is eternal. And there was when Mr. Lincoln met Mary Todd, and they got married November 4th, 1842. At first, the couple lived in a hotel, but soon they bought a house. It was tiny and not very fancy. Still, it was the first house Lincoln had ever owned. Nine months after the marriage, their first child, Robert, was born. Two years later, they had a second son, Edward, who died at age three. Eventually, they had a third son, Willie, and a fourth, Thomas. When Thomas was born, his head was so large that Lincoln thought he looked like a tadpole, so the boy was nicknamed Tad. Both parents spoiled their children. When Lincoln brought the boys into his law office, they dumped ashtrays and inkstands on the floor. They piled up papers and danced on them. Lincoln's partner said he sometimes wanted to wring their little necks, but Lincoln never scolded his boys. In 1841, after six years in the state legislature, Lincoln decided it was time to do something bigger and more important. He wanted to be the Whig candidate for the United States House of Representatives, but the party chose another candidate. Even so, he worked hard to get his rival elected. He thought this might put him in line to be elected the next time. His plan worked. In 1846, Abraham Lincoln was elected as a representative from Illinois. He moved into a boarding house in Washington, D.C. Now Lincoln would be dealing with issues that affected the whole country, not just his own state. Mary and the children came with him, but the boys behaved so badly that soon he had to send them away. Lincoln didn't have time to miss them. He was working hard. 
He almost never missed a session of Congress. He served on committees and made speeches, but he didn't do anything very important and no one noticed him. At the end of his two-year term, Lincoln returned home, feeling that he had failed to make his mark on the country. For the next six years, Lincoln concentrated on his law practice in Springfield. He had decided he wasn't interested in politics. And this is a picture of Lincoln and Mary and little Tad and Robert and that's Willie. And remember, Edward had died when he was just three. So next time we'll see what happens in chapter four. It's called The Great Debater. The next book I'm going to read is called Sneaky Spinach. Oh, do you like spinach? Some people go, no, I like spinach. <clears throat> Nick loves to eat junk food. His three favorite foods are cookies, soda, and chips. Because he eats so poorly, Nick is always sick and tired. His mom is always telling him to eat more vegetables so he can be healthier. Nick is sick and tired of hearing that, too. But everyone knows that fruits and vegetables are great for you, and nobody knows that better than vegetables themselves. Do you know anyone like that who doesn't like to eat good foods? Oh, I do. I'm not going to say any names, but I know a few kids like that. On Sunday, Nick's mom worked really hard to make a healthy dinner for the family. Everyone enjoyed the dinner, except for Nick. He crossed his arms and grunted, I am not going to eat any spinach and you can't make me. Mmm. Nick was sent to his room. Ooh, that night, the spinach leaves got to thinking, how can we make sure Nick eats his veggies? And after talking it over, they came up with a plan. Now, can spinach leaves really talk? Hmm, I'm not sure. On Monday, Nick and his mom made his morning smoothie together. They put frozen berries, milk, and a banana into the blender. Meanwhile, three spinach leaves crept across the counter, dove into the blender, and disappeared. Nick never saw those sneaky little spinach leaves. And you know what? He drank the whole thing. <gasps> and it had three spinach leaves in it. That day at school, Nick felt strong and full of energy. He even felt fast enough to tag Donovan, the fastest kid on the playground. Wow, from just three spinach leaves? On Tuesday, Nick and his mom made his morning smoothie together. They put frozen berries, milk, and a banana into the blender. Meanwhile, four spinach leaves crept across the counter. They dove into the blender and disappeared. Nick never saw those sneaky little spinach leaves, and he drank the whole thing. That day at school, Nick did better on his tests than ever before. He even spelled more words correctly than that smarty pants Sarah. He was feeling like a smarty pants himself, and he liked it. Four spinach leaves. On Wednesday, Nick and his mom made his morning smoothie together. They put frozen berries, milk, and a banana into the blender. Meanwhile, how many spinach leaves do you think crept across the counter? Oh, that's right, five. Five spinach leaves crept across the counter, dove into the blender, and disappeared. Nick never saw those sneaky little spinach leaves, and he drank. Look at him, he's drinking the whole thing. That day at school, Nick felt better than ever. He even did more pull-ups than Bobby, the strongest kid at school. Wow. On Thursday, Nick and his mom made his morning smoothie together. They put frozen berries, milk, and a banana into the blender. Meanwhile, six spinach leaves crept across the counter, dove into the blender, and disappeared. And Nick never saw those sneaky little spinach leaves drank the whole thing. Wow. That day at school, everyone in class was acting crazy. They were talking loud and forgetting to listen. 
But Nick, Nick felt completely focused. Wow, those spinach leaves are helping him. On Friday, Nick and his mom made his morning smoothie together. They put frozen berries, milk, and a banana into the blender. Meanwhile, seven spinach leaves crept across the counter. But this time, because Nick was so much faster, smarter, stronger, and calmer, he caught those seven sneaky spinach leaves before they could jump into the blender. Oh dear, what's going to happen? Hey, what do you think you're doing, he yelled. The bravest spinach leaf proudly said, We have been sneaking into your smoothie all week to make you healthier. Nick exclaimed, so that's why all those special things happened this week. The spinach in my smoothie gave me superpowers. Now Nick was so smart that he decided to put spinach in his smoothie every day. He wanted to keep feeling great. Vegetables aren't so bad after all, he told his mom. And in the smoothie, I can't even taste them. That's because we're so sneaky, the super spinach leaves cheered. Hooray! Hip hip hooray! And this is Nick's favorite smoothie. Its bright color is bursting with delicious flavor and antioxidants. You can blend well and enjoy it. It's got strawberries, blueberries, a frozen banana, some agave nectar, um, milk and sneaky spinach. Add three to eight spinach leaves. Blend until all fruit is combined. And now Nick is doing so well and feeling so great and he's eating his vegetables and his fruit. <gasps> it's okay to have some other foods too once in a while, but we need to have enough fruits and vegetables. So eat your spinach. Try it in a smoothie. That's a great way to do it. Well, good night, everyone. I love you. I love you so much, and I miss you. Amen.